thanks Arash for the introduction. Also, thank you to the other organizers for uh, having me here to speak uh, at this very interesting conference. Um, I'm going to start um, my, my talk to to discuss the atomistic view and correlations in Mori heterostructures. And this is joint work with um, Johannes Lischner and Arash Mostofi's group from uh, Imperial College, um, just to, to begin with that. Um, I think since we are a very specialized community here on this workshop, there is not much need to uh, motivate, mo motivate the, um, um, yeah, the reason for trying to understand correlations in these more heterostructures. structures. Uh, the first discovery of superconductivity was in 2018, as most of you know, and it resembled very much um, the phase diagram of the cuprates, which is of course of enormous interest since uh, unconventional superconductivity is, is still a very active and interesting topic of research. Um, but more generally, um, these moray heterostructures prevent, uh, present a very tunable platform in, in terms of having the ability to tune the structure by doping or twist angle or electric fields. Um, and having this tunability can modify the flat bands that are induced by this long length scale moray structures. And by these flat bands, we have in turn then enhanced interaction effects. And these interaction effects that are enhanced lead to phase diagrams, as I said before, that are similar to high TC superconductors. And uh, also, um, which is probably why this field exploded so fast, is that there is rather easy experimental access to all of these uh, different moray materials. Um, so, yeah, the moray structure, as most of you already know, can be tuned by the twist angle, and there is a dependence of length scale as a function of the angle, as nicely shown here in this small animation. Um, these are just two sheets of graphene uh, stacked on top of each other, where you can see that by making the twist angle smaller, we get a larger and larger moray structure. And at a certain point, which is the supercell that I'm shown here, we get um, the so-called magic angle, which is around 1.05 degrees. And at this point, twist angle, the bands are exceptionally flat. And this is the first system that sparked the, the enormous interest in, in these materials. Um, so why is an atomistic view on, on these correlation effects in these systems important? And that is basically shown here as the bottom line of this slide by starting from ab initio simulations and then fitting type binding models to these ab initio simulations, including all types of intrinsic electric fields or effective hopping parameters, or even interactions on the one particle level, such as self energies or heart rate corrections, we have basically only one parameter left as a free parameter, and that is the interaction strength of the, of the Hubbard tool, or more generally speaking, the interaction. Whereas compared to other models, uh, there are much, much more free parameters just to even reproduce the band structure of a, at a certain twist angle. So um, in our modeling setup, we have a very close co collaboration, as I said before, with the group from Johannes Lüschner at, at the Imperial College. And they start with the DFT simulations and also fit the type binding models uh, to these DFT simulations. And Zach has developed the theory to include these heart rate corrections in, in these type binding models by very simple forms. And we use all of this and start um, with interactions on a two particle level, which we can tackle by different methods, such as a random phase approximation or even functional renormalization group. And we use these as tools to describe nematicity in these large unit cells or magnetism in the unit in the large unit cells, or even superconductivity using the fluctuation exchange approximation. Uh, just a short notice, this flex approximation is shown by Amon Fisher in the poster session. Yeah, it was shown yesterday and is also probably shown today in the um, added poster session. Um, so let's start with the with the simplest approximation, which, which is the random phase approximation. And using that for a large moray unit cell, we basically um, start with a Hamiltonian given in the top equation here. And we directly see that there is the non-interacting part of the Hamiltonian, which leads to a the flat band dispersion of the Moray system. And then there's the interacting part of the dispersion, which is a uh, the interacting part of the Hamiltonian. Um, which is in this case just a density-density interaction and even just a Hubbard interaction. And 
we can approximate the uh, effect of the Hamiltonian by calculating the non-interacting magnetic susceptibility and looking at this quantity in the static long wavelength limit, doing a resummation of these uh, susceptibilities by uh, using the fact that we couple only the electrons by a Hubbard interaction, and then get information about the system's leading ordering tendencies in terms of magnetic ordering. Um, We've done such an ana analysis in a, in a very recent uh, paper, which is uh, graphene twisted on trilayer graphene, where the trilayer graphene is in rhombohedral stacking. And this system uh, displays a magic angle at around 1.16 degrees. And we propose it as a, as a new highly tunable platform that displays a variety of, of different um, correlated magnetic and possibly also different correlated states. Um, the results are shortly summarized, um, seen here in this plot, where on the left-hand side, we can see the critical interaction strength value as a function of both twist angle and filling factor. And we see that in this uh, phase space of theta nu, there are several points where the system will be driven towards magnetic order uh, using the fact that the Hubbard parameter of the system is in reality somewhere around four electron volt, or we assume the Hubbard parameter to be around four electron volt in reality, which are the red regions displayed in the left plot. In the right plot, we display the, dif the different kinds of magnetic orderings associated with the, with the different regions in the phase diagram. And we start from the simplest antiferromagnetic order inherent to the, um, uh, sub-lattice structure of the underlying graphene lattice, which is shown here in this inset, where I show a line cut through the Moray unit cell. Um, but this order is, uh, in terms of our chosen Hubbard U, um, realized nowhere in, in the phase diagram. As opposed to ferry magnetic orders, there are two types of ferry magnetic orders found in the system, um, which are uh, realized at different points in the phase diagram. So this is, again, a line cut through both the layers in y direction and the unit cell in x direction of the magnetic order parameter in, in the Moray unit cell. And these two types of ferry magnetic orders displace, uh, some of them display very strong antiferromagnetic magnetic fluctuations in some of the twisted or untwisted layers of this um, heterostructure. And then on top of that, there's also ferromagnetic ordering at certain fillings and um, twist angles. And the main question that emerges from this analysis is whether there are superconducting instabilities close to these ferro or ferromagnetic instabilities, at, and instabilities as seen in um, RPA and also FRG analyses of um, the twisted bilayer graphene system. And the argument for these superconducting instabilities would then be uh, unconventional nature of the superconductivity. And we expect uh, also this ATABC system to display these kind of superconducting instabilities. And this is basically our, our suggestion uh, towards experiment. Um, so taking this as a first demonstration of, of how we use uh, these atomistic methods to, um, uh, to tell about the correlated states in these uh, Moray heterostructures, we can take this a step further and go to a um, more sophisticated approximation that is the functional renormalization group that we can also employ for a very large Moray unit cell. And the main advantage of this um, different approximation is that we can now treat long range, long range interactions in the Hamiltonian. So as shown here, there is now a density density interaction that depends on the range of the of the two density operators within a unit cell. And we can then uh, take the two-particle functional RG flow and uh, take it to strong coupling and see what channel uh, diverges to get either a superconducting uh, magnetic or uh, density type instability. Uh, just for uh, reference, there are certain approximations we have to employ to make these uh, simulations of large scale system possible. Um, but I would rather like to show the results of this FRG in, in a couple of systems. So first, we have employed this appro approximation to twisted bilayer graphene, where we see a nice interplay between uh, magnetic ordering and, and density type ordering. So subpanels A and B display magnetic types of ordering found in this twisted bilayer graphene system. And similar to the system before, um, I show the line cut through the unit cell here and the order parameter in Y direction and the left panels of the plot display a two-dimensional representation of this order parameter. And the bottom row is a density type order parameter that 
gets enhanced when the interactions are more long range. And we do the same analysis for uh, twisted double bilayer graphene, which is a joint work with experimental physicists from Columbia University, where we first use our non-interacting type binding models to reproduce most of the features uh, in the local density of states in experiment. And this is the slide shown here. On the left hand, you see the experimental local density of states of this twisted double bilayer system. And on the right hand side, you see our tight binding approximation or tight binding theory to this experimental local density of states. And it is nicely uh, visible that many features in the non-interacting density of states are visible in both the uh, experimental and theoretical prediction. And spatial resolve, we also see that there's quite good agreement between experiment and theory. And the question why this system is interesting is because at certain fillings and certain uh, energies in STM, um, experimentally, there is um, nematicity uh, seen in that system. We try to reproduce this theoretically. And what we do is then uh, employ the functional RG, um, adding self energies to the system and also um, adding a realistic ONO type long range interaction that has an interaction range displayed in, in this sketch here. And by this uh, theory, we find a nematic instability at the leading symmetry breaking instability in, in our type binding theory. And by de decoupling this instability um, on a mean field level, we actually see that we can reproduce the experimentally seen Moray nematicity. And this is what I show here in, in this plot, where on the top left, you see the experimental results of Moray nematicity. Um, these are the Moray cells denoted here by these rhombi. And you see a very nice stripe order in, in the Moray cells. And the theoretical prediction of this ordering is very similar to what is seen exper in experiment. The bottom row shows the different types of instabilities found from the functional renormalization group analysis, where the first two are non-symmetry breaking, and the third one is actually the symmetry breaking stability that drives this pneumatic order in this system. So to conclude by employing this atomistic uh, analysis to these Moray heterostructures, we firstly have an accurate description of the non-interacting systems by uh, first a DFT characterization and then a type binding description of the model. And we can compare this to the experimental non-interacting setups. And as a second step, we employ a certain methodical toolbox for interactions, which first includes arbitrary corrections uh, that are relevant, for instance, for twisted trilayer graphene or twisted bilayer graphene. And then we can start to do magnetic random phase approximation or FRG or as an Amon Fisher's poster, uh, fluctuation exchange to describe superconductivity. And our main aim is to describe these strong correlations from atomistic grounds and connect our results to experiments. And by that, I thank you for your attention. <laughs>